catching you up on the latest stories from around the Sunshine State that you should know heading into this Friday morning, June 11th. I'm Erica Klessy. And I'm Kristen Moorhead. And this is The Point from WUFT News. A South Florida high school student has started a global movement to destigmatize feminine hygiene products. I spoke to WLRN intern Cheyenne Salazar about this student's period project. I got connected with um, a PR representative for the Silver Knights, which is this service scholarship that they do and they award, you know, distinguished high school seniors in Miami and Broward for community service in several categories. And I was sent a list of all the recipients and one really stuck out to me from Broward County, from Coral Springs. Her name was Alex Hernandez. And when she was a sophomore in high school, she started an initiative to distribute feminine hygiene products out freely at her school because as a public school, they aren't allowed to freely distribute feminine hygiene products under a law that states that Florida is an abstinence only education state. And as such, feminine hygiene products are marked as contraceptives, which is really absurd and puts a lot of people, a lot of menstruating people at a huge disadvantage if they come from underserved communities or don't have access to proper products. So she took it upon herself to help out. It started off with just her friends and then it expanded because she noticed the need and it became a greater need the more she looked into it. So it expanded outside of Coral Springs and to Broward at large and then to South Florida at large and she even you know does efforts in other countries to send out packages so a very incredible story and I just felt like it definitely needed to be um, broadcasted because I didn't know because I went to a charter school for middle school and then a private school in high school and I always had access to these things I didn't know that this was something that so many people were struggling with so I thought it was important to highlight. How can Alex's project relate to the Florida education system as a whole? Like, what can we learn from this? So one thing that really stuck out to me was just, like, her passion when she was talking about, like, the legislative side of things, because it just seems like to her that, you know, the people in charge aren't really looking out for the kids and what's best for people to just be comfortable and to just go about you know, everyday things without all of these barriers going against them when they already have a lot of things going against them. And this is something as simple as hygiene that everyone should have access to. That's something that we should all, you know, be able to achieve. And I was talking to Alex, you know, the bill to get um, these products in public schools is going up for review for the third year in a row. It's been rejected twice already. And she's not very hopeful that it'll get passed because right now the need is for COVID relief. It's, you know, for financial relief in that regard but the need for you know hygiene products never goes away so it's just really up to when will the people in charge care and that's hard to say and what's next for alex alex is so amazing so she just does a lot of community service in general she's always had a passion for this it was bestowed to her from her parents who are very giving people as she describes them so she's just always been really um, in tune with this kind of stuff. She does a lot of missionary work. She does a lot of toy drives, a lot of collaborations with that. And so she just graduated high school last week. Congrats to her. She was the president of the Girl Up Club, which is a UN-affiliated club that in, in public schools. And basically, it's a community outreach program for women. And she was the president of that. And through that, she just realized that she just really wants to make her impact lasting. She really, it's, it's, so, it's so amazing for a young person. Like, she's known since she was 13 that she just needs to help people and and in any way possible she wants to do that and to make a career path in that is just is so incredible to see so I wish her the best of luck in school. And is there anything else you'd like to add about this story? Yeah I think this story was really a great opportunity for me because I really felt like a journalist for like the first time in the sense that I felt like I was doing my part to spread awareness or something that is not being talked about. So our editor actually, when he was going through um, giving me notes, he was like, this story is going to make people very uncomfortable. Great job. And I was like, wow, that's, that's, that's exactly what I want to hear. I feel like I'm doing something and I'm making a mark. And, you know, I mean, Alex is the one doing the work, but my part is getting it out there. And I feel like I accomplished that. And I'm just really excited to continue this path I'm on right now and just highlighting stories that need to be talked about and bring awareness to a lot of things. That was WLRN intern Cheyenne Salazar talking about a South Florida high school student's global period project. 
For more state and local news, visit wuft.org or check us out on social media at WUFT News. Here's Erica with today's top stories. Thanks, Kristen. Ron DeSantis is envisioning the following school year to be one without mask requirements. According to FloridaPolitics.com, DeSantis says many school districts have already dropped mask requirements. Last summer, DeSantis teamed up with Education Commissioner Richard Corcoran to reopen classrooms by the beginning of the school year. Recently, DeSantis signed an executive order which lifted mask mandates. The order did not affect local school district mask requirements. The Florida Board of Education has banned critical race theory from classrooms. According to the Associated Press, the move is designed to shield students from material that could distort historical events. The board says children should not be taught that America is fundamentally racist. Opponents of the decision say that race and racism is a critical part of American history. Both sides accuse the other of politicizing classrooms and violating free speech. The Florida Education Association called on the board to reject the proposal. A federal judge is set to make a decision soon in a lawsuit between the state of Florida and the CDC. According to WFTS Tampa Bay, Florida states that the CDC's requirement to have 95% cruisers vaccinated does not mesh with nationwide goals. President Joe Biden has expressed a desire to achieve an adult population that is 70 percent vaccinated. After hearing both sides in the lawsuit, Judge Stephen Mary Day says he hasn't yet reached a decision. The U.S. Senate passed a bill that would make the Pulse nightclub a national memorial. According to WMFE, the House approved the bill in May. The bill designates the site of the Pulse nightclub as the National Pulse Memorial. However, the memorial is not considered a national park and cannot receive federal funds for upkeep. The bill now goes to President Joe Biden to sign. Subscribe to The Point, which will drop the latest stories into your inbox daily at 8 a.m. Visit WUFT.org for more info. I'm Erica Klesi. And I'm Kristen Moorhead. And you've been listening to The Point from WUFT News out of the University of Florida. Have a wonderful weekend.